Right, let's get started. I think there's a few people. We've got a few more people coming in, but that's great. We've got a lot of content to cover, so I better um, kick off sooner rather than later. We've all got lots of exciting things to see today. So thank you very much, everybody, for joining us um, today. It was lovely to meet a lot of you at ZeroCon last week. I hope you had a fantastic few days. Um, the wrap party was certainly um, fun. Um, and I'm, I'm sure I saw a few of you there um, having a drink or two, which was really nice. Um, so today, you know, we're absolutely delighted that we, you know, got your interest at the booth. Um, and now we're going to delve into a little bit more detail around what Project Works is, what we do and who we help. And hopefully by the end of it, you'll have a really good sense um, of which clients you might want to refer to us um, so we can help them. So let's get into it. So my name's Angela Beswick. We did meet um, last week at ZeroCon, but you haven't met my colleague, um, Lauren Parsons, who is the product specialist and the guru of all things Project Works. Um, and she'll be delving into the demo in a few minutes time. We are going to have a Q&A session at the very end. So as we're going through the presentation, if something pops to mind, please feel free to drop it into the Q&A and then we'll address it at the end. So just a quick agenda, we're going to cover a ProjectWorks overview, then we'll go into a demo. We'll talk about some of the integrations that we have um, with partners and we'll finish on the um, explaining to you what the partnership program is, um, how it can help you as well as your clients. And as I mentioned before, don't forget to pop those Q&A questions in as we go. So, Project Works. We say here, tailored for professional services by industry experts. There's a really cool backstory um, to where Project Works came from. So the founders of Project Works actually worked in a professional services business many moons ago. Um, a software consultancy business called Provoke Solutions. And they had the challenge of not having software um, that could help them see how their projects were performing. So they were really struggling to be able to scale the business. And they had the, the foresight to be able, and the technology capabilities, the skills, to be able to develop um, what originated as Project Works back then for that particular um, software consultancy business. So um, that was built, the business scaled. It was, it did so well, it was um, taken over by a VC um, investor and that investor saw um, a real spark in what they developed and decided to bring it to market um, some four years ago. So we've been in market now for four years um, we've done extremely well based on the fact that the software was developed um, for professional services businesses. So we are absolutely solving the problem of the unknown. We're giving consultancy businesses the visibility of their people, their projects and their company for performance. We're looking at the current, where are they sitting now? But we're also looking at the future. What are the forecasting what are they what are they forecasting as um where where's their product projects going to finish at the end and we'll talk about that in a little bit more detail in a second and that really brings me to our number one differentiator in market so we do have a forward-looking view on the performance of a business so that goes right down to the people the projects and the business at the push of a button you can see the revenue forecasting on a project you can see the revenue forecasting across the entire business month on month on month. Equally, we, we forecast the budget burn on a project. So what, is, what time are people spending on the project and how is that affecting the budget? We also look at the margin. So looking at the margin into the future, where am I going to finish the project? What is my margin going to be at the end of the project? So not just the here and now, but looking at the forecasting of that margin too. 
And then finally, the utilisation. How am I going to be utilising my staff on these projects? And for all of you in the room here, you know, for accountants and bookkeepers, that's really important to help your clients really understand what they're forecasting to do rather than just, you know, what has happened in the past. So that's our key differentiator with Lauren will delve into as part of the demo. So who are we ideally suited for? There's lots of names on this slide here and it's not an exhaustive list, um, but it's Anybody within the services industry, so professional services, creative um, services, however you want to define it. Um, and it's those businesses who run projects, need to have a really good handle on the financial controls of a project. And we typically sit within sort of 20 staff to 200 staff. We do have a lot of smaller clients. So we do have clients even less than 10 staff. But it really comes down to the business owner and their drive for having a solid financial control on their business. You know, how are these projects performing? Where are my problem children um, within the project and where do I need to focus my attention? So architects, engineering consultancies, town planners, um, management consultants, and then across to the other the side we've got creative agencies event companies design agencies these are all businesses who charge out high value people and need to have a really good handle on how they're performing and how the projects are performing now the other call out is that we are ideal for businesses who are currently on workflow max because they obviously have they have to move to something by june next year and we see um the fact that um, we are in market currently, we have clients live and we're a proven product and we've also got a proven migration process that so even before the Workflow Max sunset announcement, we actually had 20% of our client base had migrated from Workflow Max. We do tend to see that as businesses grow and scale, um, that's when they either ditch the spreadsheet and come to us or products like Workflow Max or Harvest or another um, typical migration path towards project works because we have the, um, the capability that a larger business needs. And we really do feel that we, we, de we will de-risk -risk the process for them. They can move now. They don't have to wait for the mad rush. Um, so absolutely, we encourage you to have conversations with any of your Workflow Max clients now um, to give them an option to look at um, to see if this is a, a relevant solution for them and lastly we do have an offer in market for any work from max clients migrating to us we do offer three months free subscription as well as a free migration and that offer is in market until the sunset of work from max now what are our standout features so we do have all of the the standard functionality that you would expect in a job management solution like quotes timesheets invoicing you know a plethora of reports and on-screen reports but a lot of the key things that people move to us for it are listed here so we are a multi-currency solution we are also a multi-entity solution so as businesses grow and they might have multiple divisions or multiple um, countries that they're working in we can have a single instance of project works and we can link to multiple accounting systems so often when clients are using workflow max as an example if they've got multiple entities, they would have multiple instances of Workflow Max and then multiple instances of zero. We can have a single instance of Project Works and link to multiple zeros or multiple MYBs or QuickBooks. We also have the revenue forecasting, which is really important. So all businesses have to do some form of revenue forecasting. So even if the solution that they're using doesn't have revenue forecasting inbuilt, they'll be using spreadsheets or something like that to do it. The benefit of coming to Project Works is it. It's all encompassed in our single solution. Likewise, capacity planning. Most businesses, as they grow, cannot keep track of people and what they're doing in their heads. So they need some way um, to manage their resources. I spoke to an architectural client a couple of weeks ago. And whilst this is creative, it's probably not scalable, but they had a huge wall in their office um, painted with whiteboard paint. And that's how they 
they managed their capacity. So they were very keen to um, get that automated and online because then it can integrate with all of your different reporting. We also have invoicing flexibility. So um, we have multiple levels of authorization within the product. So you don't need to rely on the accounting system to be the final authorization for an invoice. And that means that the, the friction um, between needing to void an invoice in zero or MYB um, goes away because you do all of your authorization in project works before it's sent across to the accounting solution. We also have the ability to mix and match billing types in invoices, which is very critical to a lot of professional services businesses. So we can have time and material billing at the same time um, as fixed fee billing on the single invoice. So lots of flexibility in our invoicing capability. We also have lead management. So we've got a really neat integration with Zero Payroll, um, which allows leave management to be um, entered within project works, authorized, and then sent across to Zero to update the leave. And the nice thing about that is within project works, it would update the capacity of a person as well as update the timesheet. So it's, it's does multiple things with that one request. And possibly most importantly for a number of people um, is ProjectWorks is very pretty, it's easy to use, um, which you know you don't want to be doing multiple clicks to get somewhere, you need it to be simple, you need it to be very intuitive. Um, and as you'll see in a second, that's exactly what um, ProjectWorks is. So I will, hand over to Lauren, who is going to take you through a quick demonstration. Just a reminder, any questions, pop them into the chat as we go. Thanks, Angela. Um, I am just going to share my screen. Cool, that was a great overview of everything that Project Works has to offer. So I'll just go a bit more into the details um, for some of the reporting and features that we have. So here I am, I am on my dashboard screen. So this is what I would see when I log into Project Works as a user. And I'm going to actually navigate to a project that is currently in flight. So I can go to the search bar in the top right hand side and I can search by the project name, by the project number, by invoice number, by person. Uh, it is a smart search, so you can get to all of those places from there. Now here is my sample project that I'll walk you a bit through. It's called Moon Landing and I can see here that my total budget is $110,000 and I have I can see this high level overview of what I've burnt against that. So that is 73% spent and 79% of that has been invoiced of my total budget. Now this is all really great information. I can see the percentages and the actual dollar values. Um, but where I can see even more value is if I scroll down, um, I can see where exactly that money is being spent. So a lot of systems might just have the overall amount, but we can break it down further, whether it's by um, task or by milestone, by phase. Um, we call these budget lines in project work. So I can see most of my uh, phases are, are pretty good, but in this consulting phase, I have gone over budget. So that's not great. And I could even drill down further if I wanted to uh, at the time code level. So that could be by specific task within those phases. And I can see the dollar amount. So, other things that we can see here at a glance, if I click into this projected burn at completion, I see this really handy chart. Now, something I wanted to highlight is that we have not only catered to our audience um, for engineers, uh, we show all the dollar amounts and those values throughout projects, um, but we've also catered to those more creatively minded, such as architects um, and those creative agencies. So we do have some visual graphs, as you can see here. So we have this red line. This is our total budget for the project, $110,000. Now, in this dark gray line, I can see the worth of what's been worked so far in timesheets. 
And I can see in yellow, that's today. So this is a current and updated graph. And I can actually see what's projected to be spent in terms of resourcing. This is the amount that I've resourced people into the future on my project. So while I'm okay at the moment, I haven't gone over budget yet. If I continue at the rate I'm going for this project, I can see that we're actually gonna go over budget um, in a few weeks in September. So that's not great. So this is a really good way at a quick glance to see how's my project tracking. From here, I can actually layer in a few things. I could layer in my projected revenue. So that's that forecast that Angela was referring to. So I can see what I'm planning to invoice in terms of revenue and how that compares to what I've actually invoiced. And ideally, you'd like to see these blue lines roughly correlate to the dark gray with the worth of what's been worked. So this is your project at a glance on the budget screen. Now, if we drill further down, we can see the revenue forecast. So again, this is the amount that you're planning to invoice per month and at a per budget line level. So I have the three months ahead starting in September and I can see my budget amount and I could type in an amount into each of these um, fields and it will total up. I can also turn on percent complete so a lot of architects like this, um, depending how, if you're uh, invoicing using fixed fee or by percentage complete, there's lots of options here. Now, this is really helpful at a project level, but what's really cool about Project Works is you can see it across all of your projects, the revenue forecast. So if we, I'll just scroll up to the top to see, to show you what I'm looking at. This is the all forecasts screen. This is across all of the projects in a business. I could use filters and maybe just filter by project manager if I don't wanna see all of them. But essentially I can scroll all the way to the bottom and see a total revenue forecast per month. So this is a figure, you know, a lot of people um, in the leadership team might be interested in. From here, we will just touch on capacity planning. So we have lots of different views for resourcing people onto projects. Now, if I go to the resourcing by availability screen, again, lots of filters at the top and I'm just gonna narrow down to one organization in my company and I'll walk you through what this screen shows. So. This is a really high level overview of the capacity of your company or of your client's company. Now it is at a weekly view here. And in this graph, I can see that pink line. That is the billable target in terms of hours for your the organization. And this green bar is showing the, the number of hours that have been resourced on billable projects. Ideally, and the yellow is availability. So ideally what you'd like to see is that green bar hitting that pink line showing you've met your billable target. What you don't want to see ideally is a lot of yellow and that would mean that your staff don't have quite enough work and you might need to drum up more business. And if I scroll down further, it's broken down by team. I have the staff in the team and I can see just how available they are or not available. So yellow means that they have availability. So Angela has 40 hours available this week and green means they have been resourced. So uh, Angela has 24 hours left um, of availability this week. And now down here, we can see red, that's alerting me that Charlize Theron this week has actually been over-resourced by 10 hours. And if I wanted to click in and see, okay, what projects is she resourced to? I could click in and I could see there's a few projects here and she's actually over-resourced by 10 hours. 
So this is a really good screen, um, especially at weekly meetings for project managers to go through uh, and resource their people on. Now, in terms of the reporting we have in Project Works, uh, our, it's quite robust, so you don't have to click into a million different screens to get the information you need. Um, a lot of it is just readily available on various screens, and you are able to just add in the information that's most relevant to you. So I'll quickly walk you through one of the reports we have. This is Projects by WIP, by Work in Progress. I'll highlight that you can choose the currency that you see this in. So Project Works is multi-currency. I am looking at it right now in the project's own currency, but if I wanted to see all of the projects just in one currency, uh, I could choose that here. And in the back end settings, you can choose which currencies are turned on, but we do have a live currency converter uh, in the background that would convert those values for you. So in this screen, I can see the companies. So it's grouped by companies. The projects are within those companies. The project manager, I see the total budget for my projects and then the total whip, that's the work in progress. So the amount of time that has not yet been invoiced. I can see any aged whip. So this is just so showing 31 to 60 days, but if I go to this hide show group, I can see uh, there's different options to showing me the age whip. I can see the amount of invoice time on billable work. If I've invoiced any billable expenses, the total invoice time, and also the uninvoiced WIP amount. Again, lots of filters. So maybe uh, your clients' companies use certain, they want to filter by certain sectors. Uh, you can create custom fields and add those in and narrow down uh, what you're seeing on the screen um, using that. So that's one report. And then another report I just wanted to highlight is the projects by Budget Health. So this is a good one uh, for a lot of different users. For project managers, for example, they might be interested in knowing the burn progress. They wanna know when the projects are going over budget. So for them, they could group by burn percentage. So that's what I've grouped by. So if I scroll down, I can see these are my projects that are within budget. I'm pretty happy with those, but as I scroll up, I can see mm, 51 to 75%. I need to keep a close eye on those. And especially this moon landing project, I can see my burn progress, 73%. But actually, in terms of what I've projected to burn on the project, I'm going to go over budget. And maybe that's because you're running late in the project and you needed to use a more expensive resource. And so you're actually due to go over budget on the project. So that's not great. And then these projects are actually quite over budget. However, if you're not a project manager, uh, maybe you're on the leadership team and you might be more interested in the margin, what profit you're making on projects. You could come to this screen, the same screen, turn off these burn columns and you could turn on the margin columns. So if I wanna see what current margin percentage and also the progress bar, I could turn that on as well as the projected margin. And so that's gonna show me, okay, where am I at right now with how profitable my projects are? And then where am I due? Um, where am I projected to go in terms of margin? So again, the reporting is really flexible. Don't have to click around a lot. You just turn on the columns, turn off the columns that aren't, um, that are and are not relevant for you. And you have a really powerful report here. So that is just a really quick high level overview of a few things that I wanted to cover. Um, I'll just circle back to Angela and uh, she is just gonna uh, have a few more slides to run through. Actually, just before you do, yeah. and I'm putting you a little bit on the spot here. Yeah. Um, 
could you show how to clone a project? So this is um, typically the way that people would um, use templates. And um, so you've you've got a new project that you're starting. It's like one that you've previously done. Um, are you able to show how you would do that easily? Yeah, that's a great question. So that is really easy to do. And one way to do that would be to go to the all project screen and you can just go to any project. But what a lot of companies do is they put in a template project and they just click clone. So if you clone the project, it's going to carry over all of the phases or budget lines that you've input and as well as the time codes. And you can edit the text as needed. You can take budget lines out. Um, but if you did just want to have one or a few different templates, this is really easy um, to create similar ones. And it saves a lot of time. And it's also worth noting that um, you can actually create projects when they're in the pipeline. So time can equally be put against a project if you wanted it to be um, what, before the, the deal has been done, um, but you can still track the time. So really good from a, um, a reporting perspective to see how much time you're spending pre-contract agreement um, so that you know to build those fees into future, future work and um, going forward. Um, Lauren, in terms of looking at billable um, targets, can we see quite easily different people's billable targets? So you can see different employees and what they have as a billable target? Yeah. So we do have a utilization report that can show this. And now we could actually see in the past what their utilization is using timesheets and we could also see their utilization um, what it's projected to be in the future which would take into account the resourcing that's um, been used against them for future time and so in this utilization target report again we have all of the filters and you can see a really high level view of what their utilization target is here in terms of percentage the amount of time they've spent on billable projects and what they've been resourced to into the future on billable projects um, and how that compares to their capacity and whether they have met their utilization target or not. Nice visuals there to be able to hone in on problem children within, a, within the business. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Love it. OK, that's great. I'll just quickly answer a couple of these questions while while we're going. Um, so somebody's just asked about the level of integration with Zero Blue and XPM. So we integrate with Zero Accounting, not which I'm not sure what Zero Blue is. So, so maybe somebody afterwards can um, drop me a note directly um, so that we can make sure that we are answering the question correctly. And um, we don't integrate with XPM. So it is with the zero accounting platform um, and zero payroll. So invoices go across to zero, expenses go across to zero, um, and we receive notification back to say payments being made or expenses being paid, etc. Um, with the zero accounting platform. Great. Now we thought we'd do a quick poll with you. Um, so I am going to um get you to all join in and have a go at answering this question. So what challenges do your clients face in their current processes? So pick the one that's most um, appropriate so that we can see just a little bit of immediate feedback um, to know where you see the challenges with your clients in this space. And we'll give you a, um, a few seconds to do that. We'll give you a few more seconds and then hopefully we'll be able to see the results in 
a minute or two. There we go. <clears throat> yeah, very interesting. Um, so 27% on inefficient resource planning. So that that's great to hear. It's obviously in line with what, what we think too. Um, less around poor understanding of financial project financials. Um, some with limited insights into the project data and the majority, so 45% are saying that they see, and obviously in the conversations that you're having with clients, wasted time due to manual processes, yeah, for sure. So that will be surrounding, you know, use of spreadsheets and not having all of the data um, at your fingertips um, within a product. So just moving on now, we touched a little bit in the um, in the demo on what we integrate with. So just to give you um, a little bit of an overview on um, the in, the ecosystem with within Project Work. So from an accounting perspective, we do integrate with zero zero payroll, MYB account right, and QuickBooks. So they're all the the, the main um, accounting systems in this region that we integrate with. Another really nice integration is with HubSpot. So that, you know, clients who um, want to have a little bit more of a sophisticated sort of um, CRM database, they maybe have a lot of, um, oh, they have a lot of time. Um, sorry, I'm just getting distracted by, have I not shared my screen? Let me come back to give me two ticks so I can make sure that you can see what I can see. <laughs> there we go. Are we all good? You can see thumbs up, Lauren, that you can see my screen now. Perfect. OK, great. I was looking at pretty pictures and you weren't. <laughs> um, so, yeah, the three accounting systems, which we've talked to, um, but also HubSpot, which for those um businesses that you look after who maybe put a lot of emphasis on lead management. That's a really nice one um, because they can set up within HubSpot um, when they want to trigger a project to be created within Project Works, and that then can flow through to create the project, create the contacts, et cetera. Um, and then that data is then held within, within Project Works. For those businesses who like software content, consultancies who use Jira or um, DevOps, we have really good integration with those platforms. And what's awesome for them is that their developers don't want to come into ProjectWorks at all to enter timesheets, so they don't have to. They can stay in Jira, stay in DevOps what they, where, where they work day in, day out. They don't have to go into another platform. But any new tasks that they create or any timesheet entries that they, they put into Jira or DevOps, it automatically feeds through um, to Project Works to update all of the, the financials. We also in natively integrate with Power BI. So that's a, another really nice integration for those businesses who want, you know, quite sophisticated dashboarding. And we're talking when, when we are getting up to the businesses that are in the, you know, 70, 80, 90 users or staff members that really have some quite interesting um, requirements from a reporting perspective. So that's another really nice integration. And then Zapier um, is another easy one to use to connect to multiple other solutions in market. Um, we have really strong APIs. So um, a lot of businesses can do a lot of um, great integrations using our APIs into other systems that they're using within their businesses. And then we also have a direct data connection with um, the likes of Excel. So you can pretty much take every bit of information out of ProjectWorks do a massive data dump into Excel for those pivot table wizards in um, in the businesses who absolutely love Excel, which we know a lot of the people in this audience um, would um, empathize with. <laughs> now, um, we were just wondering, um, Lauren, are you were you wanting to have a quick um, look at some of the other features with regards to any of this? Yeah, I um, am happy to show just a quick demo of an invoice uh, in Project Works going over yeah. to zero. Love it. Let's do that. Cool. And then that maybe answers the question of it being zero blue or green or whatever the other colors are. <laughs> 
All right. Oh. Yep, we're good. All right. So if I am creating an invoice, I'll stick on this moon landing project. If I want to uh, do an invoice using fixed fee, I could put those numbers here. So I'm just going to make up some numbers of what I'm going to invoice. Um, and oh, I am happy with that. So what I can do, that's in September, so it's an early invoice. Um, I can go ahead and create a new invoice. And let's say, let's just jump ahead in time. And I'm actually going to change my billing method to pulling through the forecast. So that's the amount that I just input on this project. And I could easily, if I had time entries, I could leave it on time entries as well. So there is um, a lot of flexibility here in terms of uh, creating invoices. So I'm happy with this. Uh, what I can do, it can go through an approval process, but for right now, I'm going to approve it at the highest level. I'll approve finance this invoice. And I'll go to the invoices screen here. I've already sent a few invoices um, from this project. But if it's just a one-off invoice, I could export it from zero here, or I could also bulk send it. Um, if there were a few different projects, I could go to a different screen. But I'll stay on this screen and I'll tick that one. I'll click export to zero. And it says that's been completed. So I'll go to my zero account. And if I go to the invoices, it will come over. I'll just go to the drafts and it's actually there. But um, here it is, it's a draft invoice. And I can see the invoice lines are here, the amounts, what GL codes uh, they're connected to, and whether they have uh, a tax amount or not, and the total. So then uh, you could just approve it from here and send it out within zero uh, if you'd like. So it's a pretty easy process. And then once it's been paid for, uh, you could actually reconcile that payment back into Project Works. So it will be marked as paid in Project Works, which is really handy. Do you want to do a quick oh. invoice as well to, to see, um, sorry, expenses? Yeah, and sure. Somebody's, and then somebody's asked about quotes. So I wondered if you wanted to quickly show that as well. Yep. So uh, let me pretend to be someone and I'm going to create an expense. So I will pick on Bruce Willis and I'm going to create an expense on his behalf. So if I click create a new expense claim, so expenses can either be already paid for or they could be planned or unpaid and they could be paid for with their own money. So if it's a reimbursable uh, expense, which for this example, I will make it reimbursable. So Bruce Willis in this case has to be reimbursed, but it could also be a company paid expense, like with a credit card um, or a supplier, for example. So you'll have to choose the project. I'm just gonna type in moon landing. The budget is expenses, but you could have multiple expense budget lines if you needed. And you could also have multiple types of expenses. This is all um, done in the setup of Project Works initially. So you could write a comment for the expense. Let's just say Uber. And I took the Uber last week. And it was $100. That is New Zealand dollars. But you do have the option, if you needed to, to choose another currency. And I will say that. 15% GST was included. If it's something that needs to be reimbursed, a receipt is required. So you can select what that would be. And I'll just click that as an example. And if you're a user, you would likely just submit that expense. 
but I'll show you. Let's say you are a project manager and you want to go to that project and you could approve it or the line manager could approve it. Um, but if we go to, where is it? Um, this one, this $100, I could view it. So this is what someone would see if they have uh, their permissions. They could make it billable to the customer. They could write a description for the invoice breakdown report if they needed. They could tick this to include the original sales tax. And they could also include a markup or a markdown by percentage or a dollar amount if they wanted. The approver could write any comments and they would be able to approve the claim. So the next invoice that's created for this project that expense will go on that invoice under the expenses budget line. Now, if we wanted to send that over to zero, we can do that. And I'll just click export to zero, very similar to how the invoice goes across either way. And you can bulk send this across as well if there were multiple expenses that you needed to send. So that says that's been completed. So if we go over to zero and we go to bills to pay, that's how our expenses go over as a draft bill to pay. And there it is. So the receipt will go along with it. And all of that relevant uh, information that we put into project works that will be sent across as well. And you can go through the normal approval process that you'd be used to going through uh, in zero or your own accounting system if it's different from zero. And quoting. Yeah, so we had a, we oh, had yeah. Next, yeah, we had a question to say, um, yeah. could it do proposals? So that's our, what we call a quote in project works. So yeah, I thought you could show that too. Yeah, definitely. Let's jump back into Project Works. And if we want to create a quote, we can go to the quotes tab within a project. Already have one here, but I can create a new one, new quote. And what it will do is it can pull through the project pricing. So when I set up my project, I set a budget, a budget amount for each budget line. As you can see on the left-hand side, these are my budget lines. It could be by phase or by milestone. Uh, and you could just pull through the fees that you've associated with those budget lines. So that's what's done here. Or you could manually change it as well. So there's that flexibility. You might have different quote templates for different clients. So that can be uploaded uh, in the back end of Project Works and you could choose that on a project by project basis and you could have a default um, template if you needed to. That would be set elsewhere. Uh, and you can select the quote status, whether it's a draft, finalized, customer approved or customer declined. So let's say that's customer approved, I'll save that. And you can now, so we can download it. I'll show you what that looks like. And you also have the ability to now email it straight from Project Works. And we can play around with the formatting, um, but this is essentially what it could look like. And we also have a lot of different ways to build the budget. So this is just a budget line and the fee amount at the budget line level, but perhaps you go a bit deeper and you say you do it by role and the number of hours they use. So maybe you know you need a designer for uh, 100 hours per project uh, and they're billed at $100, hour, $100 per hour. You can build up the budget that way and then that would also appear on the quote by role and uh, their hourly amount. So that's a really um, really good feature uh, for those that uh, really need to, uh, to do quotes for their clients. That's awesome. We've got a few more questions and I'm just gonna stick here because it might be better for you to demo some of these things yeah. um, whilst we're here rather than wait until the end and I'll finish off with my stuff at the end. Um, so somebody's asked around um, 
will the if somebody enters expenses directly into zero will the costs be pushed back into the system that's a great question and uh, that's not how the integration works so the way the integration works is that the expense would be raised in project works first and then it would be pushed to zero um, but if it's raised first in zero it won't be um, pushed to project works so there might be a change in process there for that particular client but it is mobile optimized so very easy to you know on the road take a picture of a receipt um, and actually push your push the invoice through um there and then so yeah possibly a change in process for a client there um but certainly the expenses module is super simple to use um another question here was do you mark uh, do you manually mark it has paid i think it's probably either an invoice or an, or an expense um in project works or will that be automatically marked as paid once it's paid in zero mm, good question so in terms of invoices um they will be reconciled so that payment will come back to project work so if you just click this it'll go ask zero hey has anything been paid in terms of our invoices and then it'll be pulled over um, and if we and that can be pressed as often as you need to, can't it? Exactly. Yeah. Yep, mm. absolutely. And the same thing will happen for expenses. You could click get paid status from zero and that will show whether it's been paid or not. Awesome. Awesome. Um, another question here around um, the length of a project. So are you able to have projects that are longer than a 12 month period? How would you set the budget to see your burn, et cetera? Yeah, so let's just keep picking on moon landing. So I guess it, it, it depends what you're thinking of in terms of the length of the project. So you can put in a start and end date for your project in the project settings. And then when you resource people onto a project, um, you could look at, at it at a really high level monthly view and you could go 18 months in advance. So you could see it quite far in advance. And then when you add a resource, you could say, I want this resource um, and you can resource them. The start, you can input the start and end date and the total number of hours um, or hours by month percent capacity. Uh, and yeah, so that can go quite far into the future. But in terms of the specific budget, so on this screen, it's just showing you kind of a current live uh, amount of what has been spent in invoice on the project. So this probably that might not be the exact screen that you'd be after if you do want it um, broken down uh, by month, for example. Um, I'm not sure exactly what you'd be looking for. Another, another question which might be relevant for this is um, about retainer work. So um, how would you show the budget for rolling project, i.e. clients on a monthly retainer for many years? So yeah, we do this in the forecast. You yeah. can then, yeah. Yep. That would just all be in the forecast screen. So again, you could choose to look at it at a 12 month forecast and you'd be able to input that amount. Uh, per budget line per month. And you might have really simple projects. It might just be one budget line, same amount every month for retainer work. Uh, and that would be really simple to create invoices each month for that. Yep, that's great. And then I think I've answered most of them. The last one that I think I haven't answered is, has this ever been used by um, an accounting public practice environment? And do you have the setup for templates? So historically we haven't worked with accountancy practices and um, we've we've focused on um professional services probably excluding accountants um we don't have the rollover feature that i think most of you need which i think is what you're talking about from a template setup um, that is something that we in terms of recurring jobs we may look at in the future it's certainly not there now um but other than that, and more than happy to have an offline conversation, um, I'm, I don't think there's any other um, major gaps, um, but it's just a, it's a vertical that we haven't 
targeted or really worked a lot with. We've really worked with your clients. Um, so again, happy to have a conversation offline so we can delve into exactly what you're looking for to work out is it relevant for you or not. And I think that probably talks to recurring. There was a, a question around recurring clients um, and having a monthly budget. So again, the cloning of a project is what we have, but it doesn't retain the budget for that project. So you would have to enter the budget each time. So that might be something that we, we do um, in the future. Just let's quickly then wrap up um, with the um, final slides. And then if there are any questions that other people have um i can then we can delve into those as well and i oh, let's see if i can share my screen there we go okay so back at my screen you can see the presentation Okay, so just to finish on the Project Works Partnership Program. Um, so this is something relatively new. Um, we launched it um, to implementation partners um, a couple of months ago. And ZeroCon was really our first um, exposure to accountancy practices. So absolutely delighted that we've had a lot of interest. Um, we are really keen to expand on the on the program and, and really add value to you and your clients. Um, but some of the things that we've um, we've started doing with accountancy practices, joint marketing and joint client meetings. So if you do have a referral client, um, you can either pass it to us and we take over. Um, but what we have found is the bulk of accountants and, and bookkeepers would like to be in on those early conversations which is absolutely fine. So we can have joint conversations with your clients to you know demo the value, understand the processes, get in to the detail of of why project works might help we also um, have educational sessions as a one-on-one -on -one per practice or per firm and um, so that we can bring in all of the um the relevant people within your business um into a session just so they get a, a high level understanding of what project works is who it caters for so then when they're having conversations with their clients um it might just prompt them to either mention it if they're a professional service client or pick up on a cue um, if one of your clients is having any particular challenges that we solve for. And then there is a ref an incentive for you. So um, we will offer the, tw um, the first 20% of the first year subscription fee, which um, it's entirely up to you. You can keep for yourself, which is um, the, the purpose of that, or you can talk to us and we can quite easily pass that on to your client um, for the first year. Fees are just made a note here so you can just um sort of picture i guess any clients that you're thinking of and how much the subscription might be it's 40 dollars per month per user and there is a minimum user charge there is a minimum charge of 400 dollars um per month so um yeah that that would be sitting loosely around the the sort of 10 users um but yeah that i think that is very good value for what they're getting um within the product How do you refer? So um, quite easily, you can just type into Google project works, refer project works being all one word. So often people do um, separate the two, but keep the two together. And then with refer and it'll pop up with um, with our referral form or you can go to our website um, and do slash refer or there's a partner um, section within our website that you can go and have a look at and then a refer form will pop up you put in your clients details you put in your details and then that'll come through to my team and then we'll be in touch with you to have that conversation to understand your client a little bit better and then um, arrange a, a session with them and hot off the press we have an exclusive webinar offer for you um, so only those of you who have registered today um, this offer applies to. So if you, and I highlight you, because if your clients come to us directly, they will not get this. Um, so you being the trusted advisor, you need to go out to your clients now before they approach us directly. And if you refer them in September, so I, what are we now? We are, or August, you can, do, you can do it now as well. Um, but 
by the end of September, um, your clients will receive um, the project work subscription free of charge for the remainder of the year. Um, so that could be potentially four months free of charge, which is a nice um, a nice um, incentive for them to look at it sooner rather than later. Um, I will email you all of this information. So um, and please feel free to come back with any questions. Um, but yeah, so if you refer somebody in September, um, your client will not have to pay their subscription until 2024. So that's a nice, uh, a nice thing that we're offering there. So with that, let's just pop back into the Q&A. And if I look at this now can you see the q a questions on my screen here let's see if we've got any more there so could you please cover the questions around ongoing projects so ongoing projects um the way we would facilitate that is by cloning a project so you have a project already within project works and that's set up as a template and then every time a client needs to do that same work or you need to do the same work for that particular client um, you right click on the template that you've got set up and we call it cloning and then that'll create the project excluding the dollar value that you've got as the budget line so what may come in the future is that the dollar value is retained, but at the moment, the dollar value doesn't stay in and it allows you to reevaluate um, exactly what resources you need for that particular project. As an architect, I want to invoice a percentage complete by stage. Yes. So I don't know when you asked this, but certainly Lauren showed the ability to um, select um, both invoicing at a percentage and percentage complete. Um, so there's a couple of ways that you can do it within what we call the revenue forecasting area. And then when you come to invoice, it will pull that figure from the revenue forecast to enter into the invoice. And can I invoice on stage as time and material in the same invoice as I have fixed? Yes, that's correct. Yes, so again, we only showed um, using a fixed fee um, amount, pulling it from the forecast, but absolutely you can pull from the forecast some line items and you can um, pull in time and material from others. And you can even override any of it with a manual amount. So if you want to round up to $3,000, if it was 2999 you can round up as well. So there's quite a lot of flexibility in the way in which you can invoice. Will we be able to participate? Uh, will we be able to see particular supplier billing for a project to date? Lauren? <clears throat> a particular supplier billing for a project. So is that just a list of, well, that's an expense, isn't it? Yes. Um, yeah, you'd be able to filter by some things on the expenses. Uh, the expenses report um but i actually don't think that we have yeah we don't have it by supplier you'd probably be best to see that in zero okay and also um what about retention billing by supplier which can go into more than one to two years retention billed by supplier hmm not Kathy, maybe we'll maybe we'll chat to you offline so you can walk sure, us through yeah. exactly what you what you're meaning. Um because sometimes from a supplier, is that like a, a regular like a purchase order process or something like that? Maybe. Um which we can do. Um for example, retain ongoing. So we showed that in terms of the revenue forecasting, putting that in. And can we report on quotes? Percentage one lost. Not at the moment. Um, you are able to filter by the quote status mm -hmm. um, and, you know, what company and if they've been emailed, uh, but we don't so have could, that You could put yet. a custom yeah. field in, couldn't you? And then you could report on that. 
We don't have custom fields against quotes, but we do have it against projects. Uh -huh. um, so yeah, we might have to circle back on that one. Yeah. Okay, that's great. Well, everybody, we're up for time. And I think I've got through all of your questions. If I haven't, then I will definitely go through them all to make sure that I've answered everybody. Um, and as long as you weren't anonymous, then I can definitely directly come back to you. Um, but we will um, send you the recording. Please feel free to get in touch with myself. Um, so if you've got any further questions that you would like to know about, more than happy to do a deep dive. Um, and just very much appreciate your time today and hope that this was um useful and, and valuable to learn more about project works. And thanks Lauren for demoing. <laughs> thanks Angela. Thanks everyone. Good to see you. Thanks all. Bye now.